Okay, today we're going to make feathers. Now, here's the feathers I made for this guy here. Let me just take them off here. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay? Now, feathers, if you look at feathers, I used to make my feathers straight like that, but then I started picking up feathers out in the, around the property here and found some feathers. This is an owl feather, wing feather from an owl that we have on the property. And you can see how it's curved here. So that's what I switched and instead of making them straight, I made them curved. And it just looks so much better because when you put them together, When you put them together, they, they just kind of go around and give the, give the figure a hug rather than uh, just shoot off straight off in a direction all their own. So that's what we're going to do. Now, here's another feather. I'm not sure what kind of bird this comes from. But uh, it's just about the size that we want for our figures. See, it's about that size. Now I make them, I make them a little larger because uh, you know this is sort of a semi caricature, and uh, you're allowed to exaggerate a little. So I found me a piece of wood over in my scrap pile from cutting out a blank, probably with that blank right there, and uh, this will work fine. So what I'm going to do with the grain, the grain on this piece is running this way, okay? Not this way. Got to have it running that way. So we want to build as much strength as possible into our feather, but still get the curve. So I'm just going to start out with a straight line. This will be the quill down here, this part. And then we're going to just, you know, just gently curve it off to the end. All right. I think I might even add a little curve right here. It'll make it easy to carve that curve. So then I'll just come back here about that thick. I'm going to go cut me three feathers. All right. So you don't need to see that. We've, I've shown you the balance all plenty of time. So I'll be back here in a second. Okay, I got my three pieces cut out here. See, it's pretty strong. And you couldn't, can't really break this because you really haven't, you know, we've, we've used the grain structure of the wood to build strength into this piece. And that's important because we don't want these feathers to break after a... Uh, you know, they've moved out of the gallery and off to some collector's display. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape my feathers, okay? So as soon as I get my gloves, I'll be right back. Okay, back again. So, okay, first thing we're going to do is cut the quill. Then we'll turn it around off at the end here. I'm going to thin it down because it's pretty thick. And we don't want it to come to a point, so I'll round that off. So there, we basically have a feather right now, the shape rough out the feather. Didn't take long. And down my quill a little more. About like that. So that's what we're going to work with. 
Now, with the palm gouge, this is the perfect little tool for that. What we're going to do is we're going to carve out the center of this thing. And we start from the top of the feather. Turn it over and I cut down the edges down to the edge first. I want to you know get as much close edge here as I can. Quill off. Notice how I had to turn it and go the opposite direction. Grain. It's something that to, you know, to be a real good carver, and I'm certainly not a real good carver, it's something you just have to learn, is how to handle that grain. And right here, you can come in like that. Take a little chip out. Just to show. 
show that the quill goes up on up into the feather. Now if you want, you can see how I carved some breaks in the feather there. I did that just to break up the, the uh, overall shape of just being one, one shape by breaking it up a little just by taking out some, like creating some little divots. You can make your feather that much more interesting. feather. Now that one that one comes out a little too far I think. So what I'm going to do is cut it off where it doesn't come out so far. There, that's much better. Whoop! my feather. Fly away from me. Okay, so there we have a feather. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my Sandiflex wheel because I have to do this step now. Oh, I'm just dropping everything in there. Because I can't do it later after the next steps. Okay. Okay, I'm over here at my Sandiflex wheel. Now, this is one of the one of the main tools I use, besides my carving tools and everything, to get the, the surfaces of my carvings that uh, really seem to represent my work. You can buy these, you can get them on Amazon, they're called Sandal Flex. They don't look like this anymore, now they've gone to plastic like everything else has. This is old, I bought this back in the 70s have another one down there that's even older. But anyway, I've explained this before. This thing has brushes behind these little sanding flaps, which are all slotted. So when they set, hit something, they just sort of slap it real gently. Stick your fingers in there, clean off your fingers, but it won't, you know, it won't hurt if you get your fingers in there unless you really jam it in there, which I've done. But anyway, they'll really clean your carving up. See all this fuzz here on the edge? Here, I'll just show you what it does. One thing you have to remember is always support your work when you're using this because it'll hurt it right out of your
Now if you look now, you'll see all my chips are still there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. But the edge, the sharp edges of each chip is gone. You can especially see it up here on the uh, quill because I held that in there a little bit longer than normal. It sanded it down really smooth, which is what I want, okay? Okay, so now for the next step, we're heading over to the paint table. Okay, well, I'm over here at the paint table. Now, uh, we're not going to paint the feather, we're going to texture it. I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. A lot of people burn their lines and everything in the feathers to uh, simulate the quills the, or the individual little I don't know what you call them words left me anyway you know what I'm talking about I'm going to show you an easy way to do it okay uh, this is the carving I'm working on right now it's in the process of being painted so the first thing on uh, this feather, what we're going to do is we're going to dip it in the water. So I'm going to just dip it right in there. Now this stuff here, this is a uh, modeling paste. This is an acrylic. It's just like paint, except it's real thick paint and it doesn't really have a color. It's kind of white, but it's not really white, white. It dries hard, just like paint does. And that's what we're going to use to uh, texture this, this feather. So I'll get my brush out here. You can see it's pretty, pretty thick. We're just going to paint it on the feather. Give it a good coat. to do just that's the last last step of painting it off to come back and just brush it on the surface in the uh, direction of the quill. Now you can already see that it's, it's created a quill pattern on there. That's good. It's what we're after. Turn it over here, put some on the back side. Don't want too much on here. Okay, didn't take long. Now, find you a toothpick. One end of the toothpick will be real thin. It's this end down here, and that's what we're after. Take our toothpick, get some water on it, because what we don't want is we don't want this stuff to stick to this toothpick. It'll stick to it, but we want to try to lessen that stickiness as much as we possibly can. You start down here at the bottom with your toothpick slanted. Just start going up your feather from the center. Up to the edge. You get up to the top, you kind of go straight. As always, as always, if you go back to try to correct something, it's a little worse. But keep your toothpick wet. Seems 
you feel it hanging up. Dip it back in that water again. And it's the last thing I do where the quill is, I just take it and I just drag it right down like that. Just like that. And then we'll do it on the opposite side, the same way. Just real lightly. The back side for me is a little difficult because I'm right handed, or maybe if a left handed person was doing it, it'd be a lot easier. And again, we just should take this. Just drag it right up, up there, I can screw down a little bit. That looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to set this aside to dry. Okay? Looks pretty good so far. So we'll just set it aside to dry and then we'll come back and do the next step. Okay, my feathers are dry. They look pretty nice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put them together as you can see, I shaved out a little area here on this one here, so they fit nice and fit nice together, okay? And they're, they're not too thick at that point. So we get them in position about like that. I've got some red thread here. This is just thread. Peel me off a piece here. Just wrap them around there really good. Just like that. Position them how you like them. I'm only going to use two feathers. Two feathers is plenty. Three would be just too much for carving. So that looks nice. Sorry. What? I don't Sorry. want to get there. I mean, that looks pretty nice like that. Alright. I'm going to give it a little score to this uh, accelerator for uh, super glue, CA glue. Doesn't take much. Got my super glue here. A little drop on there. A little drop on there.
that pretty well locks them in place, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to position them on his head in the best possible way. Naturally you want it in the center, but we also want it to fit close on his head. Actually, that looks pretty good right there. Just like that. Just like that. So holding that in place, got me a 1 8 inch drill here, which is probably too big. I also have me another uh, 5 penny galvanized nail. That's much too big for that. So I'm going to have to use a different size drill. Okay, so that's where I want it, right there. Okay. Now holding that in place right behind that wrap. good. So now, switching over to darning thread, I think that's what they call this. Get me off a big piece. First thing I want to do is put another drop of super glue. right there on that nail. Let that go off. I'll put a little more here on this side here. Maybe some right down in there. Okay, that's gone off. So now I'm going to use my darning thread. Lay that on here. Lay that on here. And start wrapping this again. This part, this thread here will be painted. But I want a good wrap on there.
in that last wrap. We'll draw it, lock everything in place. Okay, so that's solid. All right. I'll let that just set just a little bit. Make sure that that glue is good and set. One thing I can do is, is go back here with my knife and clean out these slits I made. Take off any little knobs that might be on there. Now we're going to go back over to the paint table. Okay, my feathers are dry. They look pretty nice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put them together. As you can see, I shaved out a little area here on this one here, so they fit nice and fit nice together. Okay, and they're not too thick at that point. So we get them in position about like that. I've got some red thread here. This is just thread. Peel me off a piece here. So down there, like that. And then just wrap them around there really good. like that. Position them how you like them. I'm only going to use two feathers. Two feathers is plenty. Three would be just too much for carving. So that looks nice. <sighs> what? I know we'll Sorry. get there. And then you... That looks pretty nice like that. Give it a little squirt of this uh, accelerator for uh, super glue, CA glue. Doesn't take much. Got my super glue here. A little drop on there. A little drop on there. That pretty well locks them in place, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to position them on his head in the best possible way. Naturally you want it in the center, but we also want it to fit close on his head. Actually, that looks pretty good right there. Just like that. Just like that. So holding that in place, got me a 1 8 inch drill here, which is probably too big. I also have me another uh, five penny galvanized nail. That's much too big for that. So I'm going to have to use a different size drill. it again. Okay, it's 
So that's where I want it, right there. Okay. I'm holding that in place right behind that wrap. good. So now, switching over to darning thread, I think that's what they call this, get me off a big piece. First thing I want to do is put another drop of super glue. right there on that nail. Let that go off. I'll put a little more here on this side here. Maybe some right down in there. Okay, that's gone off. So now I'm going to use my darning thread. Lay that on here. Lay that on here. And start wrapping this again. This part, this thread here will be painted. But I want a good wrap on that. Last wrap. We'll draw it, lock everything in place. Okay, so that's solid. All right. I'll let that just set just a little bit. Make sure that that glue is good and set. One thing I can do is, is go back here with my knife and clean out these slits I made. Take off any little knobs that might be on there. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to go back over to the paint table. Okay, we're back over to the paint table. Now this this is the same stuff as this. It's just a different different brand. But this is not. This is a little solidified. More, I mean, still flu fluid, but it's thicker than that stuff because I use so little of this over time that you know by the time I get halfway through, it uh, I can't really use it for the other step. So I'm just going to roll this on here. We're, going to, we're in the process of not only covering up that nail, but we're also 
going to create a platform to make some fluff, fluffy feathers that Indians, Native Americans, always added as decorations to their headdresses and things. So I just want to put this on here. Good. Now with the toothpick, this time I'm not going to wet it. I'm just going to take it. First of all, I'm going to disguise that nail head. And the reason I use a, a nail with a flat head on it, not a finished nail, but a flat head, is because I don't want uh, that nail to pull through. I want something there to stop it. But anyway, I'm taking my toothpick now and I'm just stippling that uh, modeling compound to bust up the smooth surface and make it look more like a fluffy little feather. Now once it dries, all these little points will bust off but that's okay because it'll look just like I want it to look. Well, the bluebirds are singing today. And it's okay if you get a little on your wrap. That's what would happen naturally. There, that looks good. Now we'll let this dry like we did the other stuff, but this is, because it's so thick, it's going to take overnight, so we'll stop this part of the video right here and we'll pick it up later when we start painting the figure, okay? So until then, I'll talk to you later.